So what I want to do today, I want to preach on the subject. It's, it's, not a, it's not a deep title, but you'll get it here in just a minute. I titled this sermon, Thanks, Mom. I know, I know some of you deep theologians out there are like, well, Brian, anybody can do that. That's okay. You're not preaching. I am. Hallelujah. Uh, everybody say, thanks, Mom. So I started thinking, y'all know it gets kind of crazy, especially when B-Raph starts thinking, uh, how in the world do Jewish people, everybody say Jewish people, the Jewish people celebrate Mother's Day. How in the world do Jewish people celebrate Mother's Day? And listen, I think it's important we as Americans realize that Jewish people were first. That God's hand is on the Jewish nation. That God says, I will bless those who bless them and I will curse those who curse them. How many of y'all think it's important that we go back to Jewish heritage and we kind of figure out, hey, listen, how do they celebrate Mother's Day? Amen. How, in the, how in the world do Jewish people celebrate Mother's Day? How do Jewish people say thank you? So listen, here's what I need y'all to do. Women, especially the men. Women, I'm for y'all today. Woo. And so I'm just going to tell you, here it is. Men, y'all need to buckle up and lean in. Because what I'm getting ready to tell you, I'm not making this stuff up. Because <laughs> y'all going to be sitting there going, yeah, right. I'm just telling y'all, this is how the Jewish people, Jimmy, celebrate Mother's Day. So listen, the first thing that a man would do, and listen, this is cray-cray, this is this, but this is truth. This is how Jewish people celebrate Mother's Day. And I think it's important we as Americans go back. The first thing that a man would do would be light a candle and pray. He would light a candle and pray. Everybody say, light a candle. Amen. Shut the door and turn. <laughs> and he would pray. Yeah. The, he would light a candle. Here's what the candle would represent. Now, we, they didn't have a switch like we had. We go over to the wall and turn, the lights come on. Back in Jewish days, man, listen, here's how they, they lit a candle, which represents everything that the Jewish people represented something. When they went to church, they went to church on purpose. They would go to the welling wall and all day long, not just five minutes, not just 10 minutes, Dylan, all day long, they would pray. They would pray. Lord, we think we're doing God a favor by being here today. We think we're doing God a big old favor because we pray over our food. Listen to me. He deserves, I'm going to fight for Jesus. He deserves every ounce of praise that you got in your body. You would not be here. I don't care how big, how bad you think you are. God is bigger. He is greater. And he is better than anything. Can we just take a minute and say, God, thank you for waking me up today. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hey, if, you know what? If you've got a cheerful heart, you'll want to celebrate Jesus. You'll want to celebrate Jesus. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I ain't even started yet. When the man would light the candle, <laughs> what he is saying, God, you are welcome in this house. You are welcome in this house. God, your presence, your glory, your Shekinah glory has to fill the house before anything else could happen. The man took it serious. He would welcome God's presence in the house. And after he would light the candle, and he'd, make, he'd have his wife sit down, all the, the kiddos sit down, he would pray. He would pray. Listen, listen, this is the prayer according to Jewish history, what they would pray. And this is in the Bible, in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. Here's what he would pray. I love this. He would say, Lord, bless them. Lord, keep them. Lord, may your face shine upon them. God, may you be gracious unto my family. And God, may you give them peace. How many of you know we need peace back in the families? Come on, y'all. We need peace back in the house. We're here. We're there. We're everywhere. Lord, how we're, we're, we're a church. It's like Jerry Springer Live. Everything's going on. We can't even settle down in church long enough to say, God, I am here today to worship you. We're thinking about work. We're thinking about food. We're thinking about when we leave church, what's going to happen. And I, you, you, I want you to sit down. I want you to light a Holy Ghost candle in your heart right now. And I want everybody just to be still. And let him be God. Let God take care of this afternoon. Let God take care of everything. Listen, you got to lean in. 
you got to listen to what God is saying. Settle down. And so the man, he said, I'm going to be the man. He said, right now, we're not going anywhere. We're just going to sit down. I'm going to light a candle. Watch this. I'm going to welcome the presence of God in this place. Holy Ghost, we welcome you right now. Holy Ghost, we welcome you right now. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, we welcome you right now. God, Jesus, we welcome you right now. May God bless y'all. May God keep y'all. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto thee. And may he give y'all peace. This is Bible. This is Bible. We're so American. We think God revolves around us. God says, no, no, no. I want you to sit down. I want you to light a candle. I want you to get into my presence. And I want to talk to you. When is the last time y'all felt God breathe down your neck? When is the last time you got so still? We're so busy. We work 60, 70, 80, 90 hours. And we as men, we got problems. We ask, well, I'm the provider. You're going to be dead time you're 60. You keep working like that. And you can't take it with you. You know what you can't? I feel the Holy Ghost. You know what you can take with you? Your wife. Your husband, your children. Come on, somebody. We can take each other to heaven. You can't take that dollar. You can't take no money with you. I don't even know where this is coming. I do too. His name's Jesus. The man would light the candle and he would pray. The second thing, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I got to fly. The second thing he would do, I love this. The father and the children would bring a gift to their mother. I ain't giving her nothing. You're, you're not a Jew. But maybe you need to be a Jew. The gift would say this. Here's what it would simply say. Y'all ready? I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was perfume. I don't know if it was a flower. I don't really know. I'm, I wasn't, I'm not there. But here's what it would say. I give you this gift to say I love you, mama. I wouldn't be here today without you, mama. Thank you for all your hard work and your dedication and your prayers and your sacrifice. And you're going above and beyond. While daddy's at work, you're taking care of me. Thank you so much. And they would just give a gift. And Lord, have mercy. I thought about this. How many of you women would love to convert over to Judaism right now? Yeah. Instead of that American stuff. Chew tobacco, chew tobacco. Spit. Yeah. You say, Brian, you're crying. I'm just telling y'all, man, listen to me. I see a lot of Jewish Ladies out there right now. You know what I'm saying? Listen, we as Americans, man, we, we get up. Happy Mother's Day. You would be a bad Jew. He, and listen to this, man. They would take time. They would take time to light a candle. Welcome the presence in. They would pray a blessing over their family, their children. When is the last time you prayed a blessing over your wife? When is the last time you prayed a blessing over your children? When is the last time you got still enough and you lit a candle and you started praying and you welcomed the presence of God in? Oh, he brought a gift. Here, here's what God just spoken to me. Every time we worship, you should bring God a gift. Every time you walk into this sanctuary, you should bring a gift unto the Lord. What is that gift, Pastor? Well, I'm glad y'all asked. You're the gift. You're the gift. And you know what? When, if you get a gift, what if you just left the gift under the Christmas tree? What if you just left the gift by, by the, on the stage? You know what you got to do? You got to open the gift. You got to open the gift. And watch, when you start opening the gift and opening your heart, you'll find true worship. So many people's hearts are blocked. They walk in church mad. They, they sit down mad. I guarantee you right now while I'm preaching, some of y'all mad. How are you worshiping? You're not. You're not. So God says, if you bring me the gift and you open up the worship in your life, I'll touch you in a supernatural way. Can somebody give God praise on that when it's so good? Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. I know this is some great, great stuff, but I promise you, I'm not making this stuff up. They light a candle, they pray, they bring a gift. And watch this. This, this, uh, this. this third thing I'm going to tell you, man, this, I like this one. The man sings a song. Mm. The dad, the father, the man would sing over the mom. 
Y'all like, <laughs> I can tell y'all are really, I'm telling you, listen, in front of the kids. And at the, listen, and toward the end of the song, the man would say, come on, kids, join in. I know it's a Rafferty house, so I try this all the time. It's, it's, I'm a joyful noise. Come on, how many joyful noises do we have out there? Yeah, there's probably more joyful noises. Yeah. And how many know well, when you get in that shower, you can sing good. It echoes too. You know, come on, y'all. See, some of y'all are so sitting here today going, it's all right, you're at Elkhorn, amen. So I can hear this man, Joy, I started thinking about this. I can hear this man pray, singing over his wife. And if I was a Jew, which I'm not, but if I was a Jewish man, here's the song I would sing over Dana. She's my wife. Y'all hear? Now shut the door. See, y'all know me too well, don't you? I changed it up. I changed it up. I changed it up. You are so beautiful to me. Come on. Can't you see? I know. It's okay. I ain't singing to y'all. I ain't singing to y'all. I, he can't. I ain't singing to you. And then at, at about in the middle of the song, Bobby, I'd get Blake and Destiny to join in. You're everything, Mom. We need. You're so beautiful to me. Okay, I ain't saying to y'all. I work hard on this, and y'all just sitting there going, <laughs> I work hard on this. You are. I mean, I mean every word of it. I mean, I'm gonna challenge y'all. <laughs> Pray go home today. You, pray, listen, Trey, you gotta receive this. What would you sing, Perry? No, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Let's have fun. Look at me. Church, that's why I almost quit church. But some of the meanest, nastiest people in the world. And when I come to church, I got to tell y'all, the grave is empty. My God is real. I'm happy today. I love my wife today. Come on, somebody. God's good. Don't sit there like you're sucking on a lemon. Give God some praise in here today. Be happy in Jesus Christ. I tell y'all, I tell you, it's something it's true. We should be the most joyful people in the world. We should. If y'all don't, y'all don't say amen, I'm going to sing to her again. <laughs> y'all done good that time. That's what I'm going to start saying, Joy. If y'all don't say amen, I'm going to sing. Y'all go, hey, hallelujah. I can hear y'all now. Yeah. Yeah, so no, number four, number four. I'm flying, number four. So number one, they light a candle and pray. Uh, what was number two? No, it wasn't, it wasn't number two. They bring a gift. They bring a gift. Number three, after he gets the gift to her, you are so beautiful. I feel that. To me. Sorry. Let me get back to the let me get back to the word. I know we got some guests here today. They're sitting there going. <laughs> they'll, they'll be back. Arnold Schwarzenegger will be back. Number four. They would have a long meal. A, everybody say a long meal. They had to be Baptists. <laughs> when I say a, a long meal, listen to me. This was a long meal. The meal would start Friday night. This is Jewish stuff. Friday night at six o'clock. Everybody say Friday night six. Oh, it's just, and it wasn't going to be over until Saturday morning, 6 a.m. 12 hours. 12 hours. 12 hours. Lord, we think we're doing mama a favor. Let's go to Fiesta, mama. Are you buying mama? I'm broke, Jaden broke. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> Check yourself. <laughs> Check yourself. I have fun when I preach. Y'all can sit there and be mean. I have fun. I have fun. I have fun. 
So the woman was not, watch this, women, Courtney, listen to this. The women, are you going to receive this? Listen to this. Today's mama day. The woman is not allowed to prepare the meal. Come on, women, I'm trying to help you. You should love me after this. They wasn't even allowed to get in the kitchen. This is Jewish stuff. How many of y'all want to be a Jew? Come on. Bunch of Jewish rabbis out there now. I see you. Her husband is sick as hell. Her husband, I was studying this out. Her husband either hires someone to cook. <laughs> or he cooks it himself. Or he goes to Jerusalem McDonald's. <laughs> no, seriously. It's her day. It's Mother's Day. She is not to do anything. Listen to me. She is not, men, she is not to do nothing. Nothing. I'm talking nothing. Watch this. You ready? No cleaning that day. No arguing. No cooking. No nothing that day. And all the men said, oh me. Yeah. And watch this. You were required by Jewish law to stay till the meal was over. Twelve eyes. Twelve eyes. You was required to do. And I can hear some of the youth. I thought about this too. I said, I can hear the youth of this generation. Uh, we got to hurry up. My friends are waiting on me. I got to be somewhere, mama. I can hear the daddy. Sit down. Shut up. It's Mama's Day, and we're going to eat as a family. We need more of that. We need daddies to stand up and say, you know what? Put your phone down. Put your phone down. We, we had something called fishbowl ministry. Fishbowl ministry. Fishbowl ministry. You put, everybody puts their cell phone in a fishbowl while you eat supper. You can't answer it. You can't talk. You put it on silent. You put it in a fishbowl and you eat as a family. How about let's try that? Come on, let's try that. I'm trying to help y'all. Let's try that. We ain't, we ain't, we're having marital problems. Put your phone in the fishbowl. With or without water. Probably some people need to put it with water. Fry that sucker. Fry that sucker. You say, Brian, you're serious. Listen. We got to make time for each other. Y'all want to see a good business meeting? If you could, you know, one thing that you can't buy back is time. How many of you with the raising of hands wish that you could rewind your tape and spend more time with your wife? Spend more time with your children. Come on, y'all. Let's be honest today. Everybody, including me. I love the church more than I love my family at one time in my life. I served the church more than I served my family. I was on a date, and my phone rang, and this woman said, I need you at the house. We're going to, we got to pray, this, that, and the other. I left my wife at the restaurant. I did. I know y'all looking at me sideways. I'm telling you, I left her at the restaurant. I said, I I'll be right back. When I come back, she was out in the foyer waiting for me. Now, I know y'all looking at me sideways, but listen, what's the difference in me leaving her at a restaurant and you leaving her at home all the time? Well, that's good preaching. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Watch this. So they were required to stay until the meal was over. And so I, I remember my son, Blake. Um, one day I asked him, I said, what was your favorite times growing up as a child? And to be honest with you, I thought he would say Christmas, vacation. But to my surprise, I wrote this in my, my personal notes. God brought this back up to my, my memory. Blake said, my favorite times, Blake's 31 years old today. Not today, but he's 31. Memories growing up would be around the kitchen table. He said we would talk. We would laugh. We had a game called a high-low. What was your high of the day? What was your low of the day? We would talk, we would make memories, and my 31-year-old son, still to today, says my favorite memories, my favorite times was us gathered around the table. Why do y'all think Jesus gathered his disciples around the table so much? 
Why do y'all think, I know some of you, why do y'all think we got an atrium out there full of tables and chairs? Not for looks. It's that we would sit down. Calm down. Talk to one another. Grab a cup of coffee. And say, hey, how you doing? How can I pray for you? Get to know people. It's important. Some of you don't even know your children. You're expecting the church to raise your children, and God's given you the responsibility to raise your children. It's our job to back you up on what you're doing at home. That way, when they come to church, we're just backing up what's going on at home, and we can send them back. You say, whoa, church was good today. That's okay. No cell phones, no video games, no TV. Just family sitting around the kitchen table making memories. So he would do this. I'm almost done. He would light the candle. Everybody say, light the candle. Everybody say, pray. He'd, he'd give mom a gift. Come on. The dad and the, uh, the children would sing over mom. They'd have a long meal together. And then, number five, dad and the children would say a blessing over mom. Not, not cuss her out. I'm telling you, some of you kids were my kids. And you talk to me the way you talk to your mom and your daddy. I'd take you behind the Holy Ghost woodshed and I'd show you the Holy Ghost really quick. Y'all can look, listen, it is not your children's responsibility to raise your family. You got to have a Holy Ghost daddy that will stand up and say, light a candle. Let's pray. Let's bring mama a gift. Y'all. It's okay. And oh, by the way, thank y'all for last Sunday. I didn't have one bad email to come through last week on what happened here Sunday. Thank y'all. Why, why, if you don't believe in it, tell, tell Mr. Tabor who's here today, who has battled with anxiety and depression and this, that, and the other, who, who emailed the church and said, I'm set free. I'm healed. God healed me at Elkhorn on 5 1. Yeah. Tell, tell Abigail, where's she at? Me. Abigail, come here. It's Sunday. I, I'm preaching it. It's all right. I'll get y'all out by 11 30. Come here. Because we got a lot of people still doubting. God's wanting to do signs, wonders, and miracles. But he has to leave Elkhorn and go to another church because we don't have the faith. That's what he says in the Bible. Is this Mike? Is this Mike work? Come here. I know we didn't have this planned. It's all right. You are so beautiful. Um, so, have I talked to you today? Okay. Um, so, what happened to you Sunday while you were sitting right over there? What, what happened? Well, on Saturday, I couldn't walk. I couldn't even move my neck like at all, like this. I was so tense, and then Sunday I got healed. And as soon as I got healed, I could walk, I could move my neck. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Who healed you? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Did the church heal you? Mm -mm. Did Pastor Brian heal you? Mm -mm. Did anybody around you that was praying heal you? Mm -mm. Who healed you? Jesus. Who healed you? Jesus. Who healed you? Jesus. Um, so you was out for a little while, couldn't even, I mean, you couldn't lay down. You was, uh, couldn't walk good, this, that, and the other. That was on a Sunday when God, Jesus healed you. Uh, what happened Monday? Monday, they put me in the game and I played the same position. Okay. Put her in the game, played the same position. I'm just trying to help y'all. The Bible says that, that you, your faith should go from faith to faith, glory to glory, from amen to amen. Just trying to help y'all. Tell, tell Abigail Bird that she didn't get healed. Don't, don't tell me. Tell her. Abigail, did you get healed? Yes. Who healed you? Jesus. Why would you fight about that? Abigail, you healed? Yes. Who healed you? Jesus. Somebody give God praise. That's good. We need, we need to make time like this. Just talk. Just talk. Happy Mother's Day. Turn to everyone and say, Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, so, so number five, the dad, the children would, would, would say a blessing over the mom. 
Each one of them would stand up. Y'all think about this. The mom would be sitting down. And the father would stand up and he would lead the family. After the father would say a blessing over his wife. The children one by one would stand up. And say mom I want to I pray a blessing over you. You today I'm begging you to go home. And grab your mama by the hand. And say mom I want to pray a blessing over you. You want to see them pass out? <laughs> Something in it. Yeah. So uh, number, number six. This is where it starts getting, going down deep. So after they would say a blessing, number six. Listen to this. Y'all ready to say I'm listening? Amen. They would go to the temple. They would come to church. Together as a family. Did y'all hear me? They would come to church. They would go to the temple. Sit down. As a family. Isn't that beautiful? My mom is here today. Y'all know what that does for my spirit? That when I can look on that second row and see the woman who brought me into this world. Who dedicated me over to Jesus while I was yet in her womb. Who is with me today still standing. And cheering me on and saying that's my son. Y'all know how that blesses me? Listen if your mom is here today and you're sitting beside her. That's a gift. That is a gift from the Lord because there's a lot of mamas on with Jesus Christ. But if your mama's here today, I just don't want us to pass this by and say, man, it was, Sunday was all right. Yeah, Brian preached. The worship was okay. This, that, and the other. No, no, no. I want us to leave here today saying, you know what? It's been good. It's been good being in God's house. They would sit with their mom. They would worship with their parents. They would sing God's praises. They would pray and listen to God's word as a family. And all this happened on Mother's Day. To celebrate moms. All I can say women. Is that God must really love you. Y'all look at He must really love. Women. <laughs> can we one more time. Put our hands together for God's ladies. And say thank you for being a mama. Thank you for being a woman. Thank you for being a leader. Thank, thank you for all that you do. At Elkhorn. At home. At work. Wherever you're at. Thank y'all women. Thank you. Come on, men, stand to your feet and give your wife a big old hand clap. Children, stand up and give your mamas a hand clap. Amen? This is some real stuff. Woo, I feel a Jewish praise going off in here today. Hallelujah. And oh, by the way, I thought about this too. This really took me a long time to get this one, mama. Mom turned upside down and says, Wow. <laughs> it's funny it does y'all so when you say mom you're saying wow wow you're, you're more than a mom you're, you're a wow mom wow you have blessed my life mom wow I know it's silly but it's true all the moms all the ladies you're a wow person and I know some of you are struggling you say well Brian I'm not a wife I'm not a mom look at me lean in you're just as important. You're just as important. You're just as important. I am not a biological father. I have no biological children. But I've got two children. God has blessed me with a son named Blake and a daughter that we had to adopt and fly 21 hours to China. But my little China da is worth every bit of it. Amen. Amen. So watch. You don't have to be a biological parent to be a father or a mother. Let me ask you something. Y'all want to see something deeper? How many spiritual babies are you raising up? How many spiritual babies are you raising up? Watch this. The last thing that would happen, praise team, you guys come, would happen Saturday night around 6 p.m. According to the Jewish Mother's Day, Listen to this. This is, this is, I mean, this is so good. So after they'd go to church, they'd come home. They'd, and they would walk outside as a family. They would hold each other's hand. This is true. I'm not making this stuff up. They would hold each other's hand. They'd look up in the sky. And they would find three stars. Everybody say three stars. And I started studying this out. Of course, it's so easy to say, the Trinity. It's so easy to say 
the father, the mother, and the children. <laughs> it's so easy to give the three stars a name or whatever. But here's what it meant to Jewish customs. Listen to this. It meant that God is my father. God is my father. Jesus Christ is my redeemer. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is my comforter. I'm going to say it again. When they, when they looked up into the sky as a family holding hands so if y'all drive by somebody's house and you see them out in the field looking up like that, you know what they're doing, looking for three stars. It meant God is my Father, Jesus Christ is my Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit is my Comforter. Somebody say amen. amen. Isn't that good? When they looked up there, they said, God is my Father. Jesus Christ, he redeemed my spirit. And I've got the Holy Ghost inside of me who is my comforter. And he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. My gift is to my right. My gift is to my left. And God, I have to look up and say, thank you, Mom. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have given me. Isn't that good? Somebody say amen. 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 And listen, women are important. I wrote this in my notes because I've got to say this. All my life, I've been to churches where women were looked down on. Less than. And listen, you got a pastor in front of you today, I'm willing to take a hit for you. Because I've never read that in the Bible, Willie. I've never, I've never, I know it's going to mess some good Southern Baptist stuff. Watch this, this is where it is. Find a chapter, find a verse, prove this wrong. Women are essential. Women are more I'm, than someone who stays home, cooks and cleans the house and tends to the kids. It's tough in here today. A woman is more. Matter of fact, Proverbs chapter 31. Let's talk about that. She took care of the house during the day, but y'all know what she did at nighttime? She sold during the day. She would take which she made at home to the marketplace. She would sell it, get the money as a provider. Somebody who helped the family, helped meet, helped mate. It wasn't just a man. According to Proverbs 31, the woman had a job too. Now, if you can stay at home, listen to me, that's perfect. Me and Dana, we raised Destiny at home for the first five years. God blessed us, but guess what? We had to go back to work. And I know we don't like talking about stuff like this, but listen, women, look at me. Y'all are essential. Women, I'm going to say something. You are just as important as a man. Now, the man is the spiritual leader of the household. He is to lead the house. You want to see a house that's out of order? Let the woman lead. If the man is to be the spiritual head, to lead the family, the woman is to be the helpmate. To support him, prop him up, bless him. But she went to work too. And then she come home. And you know what her children called her? Blessed. They had a wow mama. Women are God's, the apple of God's eye. Today, I want to take just a moment as I land this plane. I want to honor you as women. I want to honor all you ladies as a wife, as a mother, as a leader, as a mom, as a single lady. We want to take a moment here today at Elkhorn Baptist Church just to say thank you for being a woman. There's a difference between a woman and a man. We're going to talk about that on Father's Day. We are, y'all. Don't leave. We're going to... So let me go ahead and do a precursor. Happy Father's Day, too. But a woman is important. Most churches just have women playing the piano and cooking in the kitchen. I've, I've attended a church before where the women sit on the left and the men sit on the right. Where is the, the unity in that? You've, you've already got division in churches when you got that happen. And I know that some of you are taking some big time notes, but you got to prove it wrong in the Bible. A woman, God loves women. God made a woman, God made a man. You've all got purpose. And today, happy Mother's Day. And we honor you from Elkhorn Baptist Church. Amen. Can we give God a big old praise one more time? And to say happy Mother's Day. God bless you guys.
We love you, mamas. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. So if your mom is here today, here's how I felt God wanted me to end this. If your mom is here today, I want you to go find her. I just want you to go find her. I want you to bring her to this altar. And I think it's time. I wrote this, I wrote this in my notes. I wrote this in my notes. Church, it's time to light a candle. How many of y'all would agree? It's time to light a candle. <laughs> it is time to pray. Come on, somebody. It is time to give back to the person who has given to you all their life. All their life. It's time to sing over. You may not have my song. Time to have a meal. I get to leave here in just a few minutes, and I get to go have lunch with my mom. While my mom is alive, I'm going to love her. And I'm going to love her, love her, love her, love her, love her. She's the best mama ever. And so I praise God for all the women. Amen. It's time. It's time to worship together. It's time, watch, to find three stars. And all of us can say this, God, you are my father. Jesus, you are my redeemer. And Holy Spirit, you are my comforter. God, thank you for these precious people. In Jesus' name, if you would stand to your feet.